Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Nikki Fenty, aka Nikki Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. We got the latest drops on the hoodies, snapbacks, sweaters. We got a little bit of everything for you to get your drip on. Okay, today's episode, this is a great conversation we're about to get into. It's interracial dating, just the different dynamics of it. And do you bring your culture with you or do you leave it behind? So we're going to jump right into it, see what you guys think about it. And don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video. It helps the channel grow. Let's go. Go, go. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Here's my take on why interracial relationships are questionable. I'm speaking specifically black and white people. So the first reason is that interracial relationships can stem from a very negative place. Let me put an emphasis on I don't think they all stem from a bad place. But the ones that do stem from a negative place look a little something like this. I want light skinned babies with green eyes and loose curly hair. Or my parents don't like black people so I'm gonna go date a black person. Or oh my gosh they're so cute on social media I want a black significant other. Mm -mm. Number two. The non-black parent and the black child will always have a social disconnect because of the social climate that we live in. The non-black parent can have as much empathy as they want, but they can't slash won't ever be able to understand what it's like to be a black person in America. And the third reason, us half-breeds, that's so funny to me, <laughs> are stuck right in the middle. And it's more of just an internal struggle of like where we're accepted, honestly. Yeah, please don't attack me. Be with who you want to be. Just have good intentions. So this is a story basically uh, it's probably gonna be a two-part series because this story is kind of long but it's about how I dated a girl for two years and come to find out her parents were uh, racist and didn't approve of our relationship and I didn't know for two years I thought everything was good I thought you know we're happy and stuff but to get into it <clears throat> basically so I worked for FedEx at the time I met this girl I was delivering packages right FedEx driver, dream job, don't do it anymore, but I have some good times on that job. But anyways, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm delivering packages. And you know, when you're a FedEx driver and you're delivering packages, you talk to a lot of women. I did a business route. So you can either do home delivery or business. I did a business route. So, you know, I'm talking to all the girls. I'm, you know, making them laugh and stuff like that. One of the guys that was training me said, hey, this is the best looking girl in the domain. It's called the domain, okay? That's where I delivered the best looking girl in the domain on the route basically and I'm like, okay, cool And so we go to the stop and Yeah, I mean she was she, she was a beautiful girl. She wasn't like The most beautiful girl that I've seen but like natural beauty wise. She was a beautiful girl. Okay, and and so We get there we talk she was rude to me at first very rude to me turn I was turned completely off. I was like, I don't I don't want anything to do with this girl. This girl is so rude. Um, and so I didn't really like talk to her or anything like that. And then, uh, you know, a couple months went by to be honest. And then like, I think the next day actually though, the next day I went there or next week, I can't remember, it's been a minute. Um, and granted, this is like two, three years ago. Um, you know, I go back and she's nice to me. And so we're, we're kind of having a conversation or whatever. <laughs> But come to find out she has a, a boyfriend or whatever. I'm asking her co-workers like, yo, what's her name? You know, she has a boyfriend though. So, um, and I ended up getting her number only because if they had pickups, uh, you know, actually she got my number. She called, they, they would call me and be like, hey, we don't have anything for you to pick up today so you don't have to come by the store. And I'd be like, all right, cool. So, you know, a couple months go by and uh, she goes, to uh, I think it was Nantucket she goes over there for like two months so I didn't even see her for like two two three months didn't even see her for that for you know that long and then she comes back randomly swear to God randomly I get a friend request from her 
and and three of the girls that work at the store random like so random and this is months later get a f- i don't think it's a coincidence that you see a lot of black black dad white mom um and i honestly like haven't unpacked it fully within myself and like my family but i think that like for anybody who's in an inter- interracial relationship whichever way it goes i think it's important to realize that like if you were the white partner in that you need to be an ally because you're not just dating this person because they're beautiful obviously you are you you're attracted to them in some way but like you have to understand that with that and whether this is like a black person or any other person of color like you have to understand with that comes maybe some baggage that person's not even aware of but um your your whiteness and like your privilege in the world is something that they haven't experienced it is something that you have to be aware of and you don't get to just like live in that that ignorance of your privilege anymore because you are now dating somebody you're now associating with somebody who doesn't live in that same privilege interracial dating is hard for anybody who's in it and i feel like it's especially hard when you are their first experience of that particular race or ethnicity lately and real quick, I think you should bring your culture into your relationship, and that's what makes you you. That's your dynamic, who makes you who you are. You, you know, and as you two guys bring that together, that's when you should, you know, keeping it out of the relationship. I don't know if that's really good. Yeah, I feel like a lot of women have been in it just for the black experience, at least in my experience. Like, I've noticed that the progression of the relationship is significantly slower compared to dating someone of the same or even if they were dating someone who wasn't specifically black like me. There's no plans for the longevity of a relationship, no plans of the future. When it comes to meeting family and friends, I know when dating Asian women, meeting family, that's that's tough. You might meet brother or cousin here or there, but mom and dad, It kind of crossed my mind, and I could be the Lulu Melon for this one. I could be really the Lulu Melon for this. But it just just feels like girls just want to experience the black experience. What is the black experience? I couldn't tell you. I'm only 88% black according to Ancestry. Now, according to stereotypes and things that you see in the media, being this caricature of what's, per- what's perceived in hip hop or being athletic. Yeah, don't fit any of those bills. So I feel like if girls are getting with a guy who looks like me, expecting anybody who's having any kind of expectations to be held to whatever the stereotypes are in the modern era, that might be why a lot of relationships have failed though. It's just I never really met those expectations. Those stereotypical expectations but I don't know what do you guys think do you think women are in it just for the black experience or if you're not even if you're not black say you're you're Indian are women only into you for your cultural experience do y'all want to talk about interracial marriages and interracial relationships so there are four different types of relationship styles when it comes to intermarrying let's start with the least desirable So the obliteration style is when both people in the relationship completely renege their cultures and forget about who they are because they're now in an interracial relationship. Those are the, I don't see color, I don't see race. In order to have peace in their household, they're just gonna completely forget that they are a person with a culture that speaks a certain language and celebrates certain holidays. They're like, let's just not get into that at all. And then right after that is the immersion style. I see this one a lot, especially in America. Immersion is when one person from the relationship completely immerses themselves into the culture of their partner and forgets about the culture that they come from while allowing their partner to still practice their own culture. Highly unnecessary, might I add, but listen, y'all be following y'all hearts or whatever. And then there's the compromise style. The compromise style is when both people are giving and taking certain aspects of their culture. So maybe one year they'll celebrate the Chinese New Year, the next year they'll celebrate, I don't know, Christmas or something like that, and they'll go back and forth compromising who they are. And then the most ideal, which I don't be seeing, is called the consensus style. 
And that is when people are at a consensus. They understand that we are different people from different cultures. We can understand and respect and be involved in one another's cultures while still remaining who we are. Okay, I think when it comes to interracial dating, it's just like any other culture or any other race. You have to bring your culture into the relationship. As far as leaving your culture out, I think it leaves a part of you out in your lineage. But it's gonna be, it's not gonna be the easiest thing, but I think dating in general is not the easiest thing. I think that, you know, just to come into one, you know, coming to one conclusion on so many different things, different opinions, different ways of living, how you've been, your upbringing, all of these things come into play when you're, you know, but there's, there's a percentage of people out there that say interracial relationships work better than, um, you know, other dynamics, other races. And so, you know, you never know. You can't stop somebody from loving somebody else. OK, so you guys leave your comments down below. Let me know how you feel on it. And um, do you guys agree with any of these conversations that you heard? And which ones do you feel like um, more pertain to your opinion on how you look at things? Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Helps the channel grow.